You're watching Old Mate's Backyard Tech. It's 8.30. Apple imagines iMac built into a curved sheet of glass. Google Drive takes a dive and knocks out G Suite. And the UK to decide whether or not Huawei's 5G kit should be banned. From Backyard Tech. This is Tech News Today. 8.30 Tuesday morning. Good morning everyone, welcome to today's edition of Tech News Today. Three stories to get through, one I mentioned in the Tuesday promo uploaded earlier and it looks like Apple's on their dream and design track again. Let's get into this one, this one from The Verge. Apple imagines iMac built into curved sheet of glass. The patent application's design curves from keyboard to screen. Apple applied for a patent for an ambitious design for an all for a new, I'm sorry, all-in-one computer which integrates both its keyboard and screen into a single curved sheet of glass. The patent application, which was first spotted by Patently Apple and which was filed in May of last year, describes how the iMac light computer's input area and display area, quote unquote, respectively could be built into a single continuous surface, while a support structure behind the display could then contain the computer's processing unit as well as providing space for all the machine's ports. It's a pretty striking design for a couple of reasons. For one thing, the amount of curved glass involved is far more than Apple has ever used in one of its products before. It's also interesting to see that the company is thinking about taking the iMac's all-in-one design even further by integrating not just the computer and display together, but also the keyboard and touchpad as well. Although the application also describes how the keyboard could be detached during use. Is it me or is it just a glorified laptop? Because that awfully looks like a um, docking port, really, doesn't it? You guys can pause it there to look at it. Beyond the application's core claims, Apple outlines some pretty ambitious concepts for how it would like the new iMac design to work. Most interestingly is an idea of how you could dock a MacBook into the device. The laptop would theoretically output its screen to the iMac's display, while its keyboard would pass through a hole in the middle of the machine to let you use it as normal. At another point, the application suggests that it's a single sheet of glass could fold down its middle to allow you to pick up a packet away when not in use, I'm sorry. Given how radical the design is though, we'd be very surprised if the patent application for the electronic device with glass housing member, quote unquote, made it to market in its current form. However, given that iMac's design has remained relatively unchanged over the past decade, coupled with new advances in glass fabrication, it's not surprising to learn that some designers within Apple are considering a shakeup. Well, I guess you could say uh, it would take up about the same amount of room as the existing iMac when you consider that with your iMac you've already got a screen and then separate keyboard and mouse. So I'm not surprised. Um, Apple does has a reputation of doing things radically. I'm not sure about that one. This one's from the register. Because Monday mornings just aren't annoying enough, Google Drive takes a dive and knocks out G Suite. It's not you, it's G. Uh, 
An issue with Google's online storage system, Google Drive, booted users out of the web giant's online word processing and spreadsheet services on Monday morning, US West Coast time. Quote, our systems have, our system have, sorry, start again. Our systems have detected unusual traffic from your computer network. Please try your request again later, close quote, was the message that met hundreds of thousands of users as they tried to access the services. At 10.30 GST, Google, sta Google Standard Time, aka Pacific Time, the company recognised the issue on its status page. Quote, We're investigating reports of an issue with Google Drive. We will provide more information shortly. The affected users are unable to access Google Drive. Close quote. Google Drive is, is the web's titans cloud storage service and a whole host of other services rely on its proprietary function. Sorry. Reported properly on it to pro properly function. I'm sorry. Its impact is similar to Facebook or Twitter falling over, except people use Google Draw Google's G Suite to do actual work rather than emit brain farts to the world. <laughs> I like that. Fifteen minutes after recognising the issue, Google claimed to have identified and fixed the problem. A second update at 10:43 p. Pacific time read quote Google Drive services have already been restored for some users and we expect a resolution for all users within the next within the next one hours please note this time frame is an estimate and may change close quote and then shortly after that quote the problem with Google Drive sh should be resolved we apologize for any inconvenience and thank you for your patience and continued support Please rest assured that the system's reliability is our top priority at Google. And we are making continuous improvements to making our systems better, close quote. Gotta love it when they, they, they issue that sort of stuff because it, 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 it's just a smoke screen, isn't it? Even though the downtime is likely to end, uh, is likely to end being less than an hour, it is still highly unusual failing of Google's core systems for a service that is that it frequently boasts is extremely reliable. Confidence in using online services is almost entirely dependent on the sense that it would not go down or fail. Adding to Google's woes, it emerged this morning that US Justice Department is actively working with state attorney generals from across the country to investigate the company's antitrust issues, which we've covered in a news story before. At a meeting between all party, uh, a meeting, I'm sorry, between all parties is happening this week according to several press reports. And for once, it's not a partisan issue. There are 48 state AGs working together and the tie in with the Justice Department's points to a broad effort across the state and federal governments to dig into Google's activities. That takes away from the, one of the most effective lobbying techniques the American corporate giant uses these days, driving a partisan wedge into matters. Um, look, it's... Okay, H how do I put this? Apple has suffered a similar problem in the past. Microsoft has suffered a similar problem with Azure and 365 in the past. Google's not infallible. In fact, not, no tech giant is infallible. They can't guarantee you 100% uptime. Things are going to happen. Be it a software issue um, a, a network issue, a hardware issue. You can have as much redundancy in your systems as you need, but that doesn't prevent you from having something go south. Somewhere along the line, something will have a dummy spit. You're talking about a piece of electronic equipment. It is not infallible. Okay. So, you know, Apple's had trouble with iCloud and the App Store going offline. Microsoft's had multiple problems over the past number of years regarding Azure, 365, and the like, it all just falling over. Google was bound to have a similar problem at some stage. 
The problem is, is that Google prides itself or attempts to prove to people it has the ultimate in reliability and it does not. If you look at this as a perspective of reliability, you're not going to get 100% reliability. You are talking about electronics. They will fail. Something will go wrong. It does not matter whether it is a... Well, from a storage point of view, it doesn't matter whether it's an SSD or a mechanical drive. Something will go wrong. So I'm not surprised. Bad luck for Monday. It would actually um, antagonize your Monday-itis. But, you know, it's, something went south. You know, bad network packet. That's enough to knock anything out. You're always a day, a Huawei. UK to decide whether to ban Chinese firms' kit from 5G networks tomorrow. Though we might not hear about it straight away. Again, this one from The Verge. Huawei or other way. The British government is expected to decide tomorrow whether to include the Chinese tech giant's kit in, it, in the core of its UK 5G network at a meeting with the National Security Council. It is widely believed the Prime Minister Boris Johnson will continue to allow Huawei's equipment to be used on non-core elements of UK mobile networks. This would include elements such as antennas and RAN equipment, radio access network, while restricting access to more sensitive elements. Most 5G carriers use Huawei's kits to some extent, including EE, 3 and Vodafone. The sole exception is O2, which instead relies a exclusively on kit from Western suppliers Nokia and Ericsson. Any decision to ban Huawei is entirely, in sorry, any decision to ban Huawei in its entirety would have dramatic consequences for the three networks that are using its antennas. In July, a Vodafone representative told ZDNet that removing any Huawei-made infrastructure could cost the firm as much as 70 million pounds. It would also almost certainly delay its nationwide deployment of 5G technology, leaving O2 with a significant advantage. Huawei's involvement in the construction of the UK's 5G network remains deeply controversial um, and a major sticking point in the Anglo-US relations. On Twitter, US Secretary of State Mike Pompeo described the decision faced by the National Security Council as, <coughs> excuse me, quote unquote, momentous and suggested that anything short of a total ban would harm UK's sovereignty. The US government regards Huawei as intrinsically not having a good morning this morning linked to the Chinese government and fears that Huawei's 5G infrastructure would serve as a back door to Beijing. It has also threatened to limit intelligence sharing with the UK should Britain permit the use of Huawei's core network gear. <laughs> Andrew Parker, Director General of MI5, has rebuked such concerns, saying that he, he didn't feel that Huawei would significantly harm the transatlantic flow of intelligence, which it long has been a cornerstone of the so-called quote-unquote special relationship. Last year, the US government placed Huawei on an entity list, prohibiting US companies from doing business with the Chinese firm unless it receives an, exemp an exemption. This extends to sharing of technology. Most visibly, this has forced Huawei to ship its latest handsets without Google's apps, massively hampering their consumer appeal in the West. On the network front, the US Federal Com Communications Commission has muted forcing rural, car rural carriers to remove Huawei's networking gear in order to continue receiving federal subsidies. These carriers serve small, often geographically distributed users who have, who have in some cases been deemed by the legacy carriers as uneconomically viable to support. Same thing's happened here in Australia. Although the UK government is expected to confirm any arrangement tomorrow, it will not announce it immediately. 
The Register has asked Huawei and the Department of for Digital Culture, Media and Sport for comment. If we hear back, we'll let you know. Um, okay, I don't want to get into a slanging match over this. Um, and normally we would hang this over until the weekly wrap-up, but as there's no weekly wrap-up this week, um, I have deep concerns regarding Huawei. Very deep concerns. Huawei wants you to believe that they have no interaction with the Chinese government. I don't believe that for a second. I can tell you now, if the president wants something, Huawei would give it to him. Boris won't want to go too far. He's got to tread lightly like we do here in Australia. We know that if you piss the Chinese off, they will crumble you and hack you to pieces. They have hacked Australia to the point where the Chinese government knows even I'm uploading this video. They'll know it. They'll see it, you know. Um, I can understand the US because obviously the, the, the relations between the US and China are, are, are at the Earth's core, basically, and frying. And the US doesn't want to appear weak when it comes to technology. Although, let's face it, since the end of Bell Labs, the US has battled. All right. Um, I would assume Boris Johnson will take the cautious approach. He'll allow 5G, Huawei's antennas and RAN to be put up, but he won't let it into the core because, he, as it says here, I uh, believe the promise will continue to allow Huawei's to be used on non-core elements of the US mobile network. This would include elements such as the antennas and radio access network systems. They're external to the core network. Now, some pessimistic um, conspiracy theorists would say that even if 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 the that equipment's on the outside of the core, it's highly likely China could could reverse back in. Um, Vodafone and Three would be um looking at it from a business point of view saying well if Huawei is completely blocked out O2 is going to get a massive leg up um honestly I think I'd I'd be interested to see what the UK government decides to do um obviously Brexit means that they're on their own they don't have to conform to any standards um, obviously, O2 using Nokia and um, Ericsson, slightly safer than Huawei. I have a great disdain for Huawei. I believe they are dodgy, to be honest. And I don't believe for a second they do not have a backroom tie to the Chinese government. I don't want to get into a slanging match, but that's my point of view. I believe they they offload information to the secure to the china china's version of you know the nsa or or aces here in australia sd here in australia or ghcq over in the uk so i don't believe for a second they are not tied to the chinese government um i find that impossible to believe personally so there we are as far as the apple um glass thing is concerned let us know what you think is it a radical design from apple or would it work and how much would it cost it's apple so it wouldn't be cheap and would you get one there we are tech news today here at backyard tech enjoy your tuesday guys and i'll catch you tonight for the convos have a good one cheers this has been another presentation from Backyard Tech.